guys, so the last vlog I uploaded was just before Frankie's 21st and it was a great night, the closest thing I've had to a London night out since New Year. It was nice to let my hair down and I think the same can be applied to Frankie. It was nice to see her away from Mansfield and having a good time, but she needs to build up her partying stamina. It was barely after midnight and she was sitting down cradling her feet. But luckily, Will is as keen a dancer as I am. It was well past three before we left the club and it was nice to see Tom again. Even if only briefly, I think he's still a bit sore about the whole lover's vows thing. I had a really nice time, and I think everyone did, except Ed, who was doing his best to be the grumpy, responsible one, but even he got a few drinks down him, and I managed to convince him onto the dance floor once or twice. Frankie looked stunning. It's amazing what a nice outfit and a little bit of confidence can do. Mr and Mrs Bertram were complimenting her about how pretty she was, and bless her, that girl does not take compliments well, and I don't think she's ever had as many as she's had in that night. Frankie despises attention, whereas girls like me crave it. I was a little naughty and sent Henry some pictures of Frankie to show him that she was wearing his earrings. He's a bit like a lovesick puppy at the moment. I can't decide if it's cute or pathetic. And I know it was a bit untruthful of me to give Frankie the earrings, but... Henry was spot on. She would never have taken them if she knew they were from him. She's too stubborn and too proud. Plus, the present I got her was nowhere near as good. It's gone a little quiet now that the party's over. Will's leaving soon. He's going to Portsmouth for a week and then, well, back to sea, I suppose. So him and Frankie are spending a bit of time together today. It's quite bittersweet, actually, and I hope we'll be seeing more of Will in the future. Mary Crawford, Crawford Designs. Oh, that's excellent news, Steve. Uh, no, I'll ask Grant Crawford to contact you about it. Great. Yes, I'll see you at the Mansfield Park launch. Perfect. I'll see you then. Hey. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt whilst you're on the phone. Oh, how long have you been standing there? <laughs> oh, not long. Just wanted to pop up and say hello. Well, that's great. I need a break and a chat, so take a seat. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Is this the... Guest list for the opening of the new wings is <laughs> huge. Yeah, we don't do things by half at Crawford's. Can see. <laughs> I was thinking earlier about how nice the other night was. You know, Frankie's birthday. We should do stuff like that more often. Another night out? I don't think I've recovered from the last one. <laughs> Lightweight. I mean, come on, it was fun. You know, relax and just throw caution to the wind. Not very good at throwing caution to the wind. It usually comes back. You are a boring old sort, do you know that? It's like you've got a 50 year old trapped inside a young man's body. <laughs> Little bit rude. <laughs> <laughs> it was good seeing Tom and Will and Frankie just enjoying themselves, you know, just being happy. <laughs> I completely agree. And she looked beautiful the other night. She did. Well, she always does. <laughs> I do worry that she doesn't realise how highly people think of her here. I mean, if she wasn't here, we'd lose the plot. <laughs> You, Evan Bertram, are an incredibly sweet man, and I honestly don't know why you're with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why you're with me. I mean, I don't think I'd have had the guts at school to talk to someone as beautiful as you. <laughs> and yet, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> I do worry about Frankie. I mean, Will coming here was so special to her. I wonder about what she's going to be like when he goes. I know it's not nice, but it's not like they're unused to being apart. Plus, she's got you. Does she? I don't think I've been a very good friend recently. I mean, we used to be as thick as thieves, but recently, what with me starting a new job at Thornton Lacey and moving to London, I mean, everything's changed. And hopefully for the better. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Frankie's made of stronger stuff than you think. She's not going to, you know, wither away just because you and Will aren't within arm's length. And who knows, perhaps maybe without any ties here, she'll finally, you know, move on and have a career. Yeah, yeah hopefully that's true. I mean, maybe I should have helped push her towards her goals more. That's what she's done with me. She always encouraged me to do whatever I wanted. Well, you can't blame yourself. You're not responsible for Frankie. I told you she's her own person, which I think she's beginning to cotton on to. 
You don't need to protect her anymore. She's not a timid 16-year-old girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're, you're probably right. Anyway, I am bored of talking about Frankie. I want to talk about me and what you are cooking me for dinner tonight. <laughs> well, my lady, you'll be pleased to know I've been slaving over a hot stove all day to provide for you takeaway. <laughs> Ed, I'm going to be the size of a house when I get back to London. <laughs> That's going to be the second takeaway we've had this week. Oh, fine. Okay, but tomorrow <laughs> I'm teaching you how to cook. No, sorry, that is a lost cause. I spent my entire time at uni just eating ham sandwiches. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> See you in a bit. Dinner at seven. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid today's vlog will have to be mine and Ed's minus waffle. But you were saying, Livy, that you wanted to see more of Ed, so there you are. <laughs> see you soon.